Hey everyone, this is Pam Coey, and um, one of the things I really love to do in my studio is try to be more efficient, try to organize, and um, one of those things that I love to do is, you know, when you have people come to your studio, have a really good way to um, display your artwork. So this short video is going to be um, a thought I had when I went to Ikea about maybe two years ago, and I picked up one of these um, uh, kits which has like wire that goes between you know two things that you mount onto a wall and what I decided to do um, I've got one up there now that you can kind of see and I'll, I'll give you close-ups but the main thing is that you um, you have a very taut wire and then you have these little clips that you know kind of move anywhere you want them to and I've dedicated this wall to my hanging system for basically works on paper. So, you know, it's not, this is not a system that you would want to hang a framed work from, obviously. But I just wanted to show you how versatile this is going to be. I'll show you like when I get it all finished, but it's going to take me a while. So what I've done though is um, I've got it, you know, six inches from the top. There's going to be another wire here and all the way down every foot. So I'll have a total of seven uh, wires going across. And the reason I did that is because um, I want to be able to hang, you know, different sizes. And sometimes I work, you know, you guys have seen me work on the four square size. So let's say that I wanted to hang one of these guys. You can do that. Um, there are these little clips that come with it. It's very nifty. But what if I then want to have, you know, I could have a painting that's like this entire, the size of this entire wall, so I could hang that as well. So that's why I wanted to have seven different levels because if I had all small work, then um, um, this just shows that like I could also hang a very large work. This is larger, I should say. And, you know, go like this. So the main thing, like these kits are not expensive and they come with the clips, they come with the wire, they come with these guys. All, and they come with a little tool for undoing these little screws. Um, the only thing you need is I have a drill. Um, I'm using a level and screwdriver, wire cutter. I think aside from these tools, uh, everything is included, which is really awesome. And sometimes you get a kit, you know, and things are missing or the instructions are horrible, but um, for anybody who has gone to Ikea, um, you know that basically their things are not that expensive. The instructions are pretty good. And this first wire, it did take me a while because um, the thing is I, you know, I kept making sure it was level and I had to kind of, you know, figure out the instructions. I'm, I'm not all that good at things like that. But anyways, um, the cool thing about the instructions, I mean, it's in all these different languages every language you can imagine, but it's all visual. Like there is no text. It's just all visual on how to put it together. So believe me, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Cause I'm really challenged. Um, I'm not good at things like this. So I'm just going to leave the camera on while I um, put the rest of these levels on here. So I just wanted to show that this is a system that I'm actually kind of excited about because works on paper, if you have like a studio tour and you just don't want to frame your work and you want to like have it be affordable, less expensive, works on paper that don't have a frame, don't have a mat, don't have glass, all that kind of stuff. Um, people like to buy that because they like to buy it less expensive and then take it to a framer where you know they're going to spend a lot of money um, and they can get exactly the framing that they want. So that's why I'm doing this. Okay. Okay, everyone, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a close-up of um, the components to making this hanging system. I'm really, really happy with it, and uh, I think for anybody who works on paper and you just need to have a place to have your work, not only drawing, but be able to stand back and look at it so that you can kind of see everything as a whole, it's just really a great hanging system, and it's not expensive. So you're going to need a drill, and then here's the kit that you get. You can get it at Ikea, but I found it on Amazon and I'm going to have a link in my resource section because I don't live near an Ikea. But if you do, um, it's D-I-G-N-I-T-E-T. -E Comes with clips and then you have to buy your own screws and that's gonna just, whatever screws you get, you know, they obviously have to fit through 
the, um, the part that I'm going to show you in here. And then it's going to depend on how, how thick your wall is. And I tend to have about, um, about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch plywood that I'm usually drilling into. So I got the three quarter inch screws and they have the flat top. They do in the instructions tell you to get these flat tops instead of the rounded ones. I don't really know why that matters, but anyways, I got that. You're going to need a wire cutter, something to measure with and a screwdriver. And then one more thing, I like to use a level, you know, just to make sure all of your, if you have more than one row, they're all, you know, uh, perfectly horizontal and that sort of thing. So these are the instructions. And again, they don't really walk you through it except for a diagram, which is fine for most people, but I, I can be challenged this way. So that's why I'm doing this video because along the way, um, well, at first I found it kind of intimidating when I looked at this and I, I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work out, but in the end it was fine. But there are a couple little tricks that you might want to know. The wire that it comes with is 16 feet long. The kit comes with these two round pieces here. And inside is the part that you're going to screw onto the wall. And what I, um, it says it in the instructions, but I didn't quite see it right away, is that um, they're labeled with like a left or a right. And so I'm going to just push this out of the, got to push it out. Um, that's where the label is. It's on, like it's on the bottom side. There's an R. And then this one should be the L. Let's push that out. Save those for later. Here's the L. It's on the bottom side. So when you screw um, these two posts in, you've got two posts here, and they also have labels. They're engraved. So this one says L, this one says R. When you screw this into this part, um, they're going to screw in opposite directions. So the left is opposite from the right. And so you got to screw it in and then just kind of play with it until it starts to thread and go into place. Make sure you've got the R and the R. Make sure the little flanges are going toward the post. And later on, um, you're going to screw it onto the wall through these holes. But, and after you screw them on, you're going to want to slide these top caps over each one. And they just snap into place. But until you get them screwed into the wall, they're kind of in the way. So just take those off, put them aside. You don't need those right away. The left one has this bolt coming out of it. The right one does not. Um, you can see it, it can go either way like this. And this is the piece that has to go onto the bolt. Now you've got uh, kind of a short piece and then you've got a longer piece. The longer piece actually has a little hole in it. Can you see that hole? And that hole is going to be for this tool that's going to go right through the hole and you know, you're going to be able to tighten it later. Don't worry about that now, but my recommendation, this is something I also learned, is you want to kind of unscrew these and it can go pretty far. Like you can go probably, um, that's about a quarter of an inch. Then you're going to screw this onto this piece, the bolt, and there's only one place this can go, so you're not going to be confused on that. What you might be confused on, though, is how far should you screw it on? You might be tempted to screw it all the way onto the end, because you could do that. But what I found is that if you want a nice taut wire, leave like a quarter of an inch here, and then leave about you know, an equal amount there because what's going to happen is after you have your wire in here, you're going to be able to tighten it so that it's pretty taut. You're going to take your wire. They recommend taking that plastic coated tip. And again, I did that the first time. So here's the plastic coating on there. You can kind of see it's just this, this one happens to be white. The first ones I had were kind of clear. That feels like rubber, but you're going to um, just put that into the end here and make sure that you insert it, you know, as far as you can. And then you're going to tighten it with this little piece again. Start with the, the innermost one. I'll tell you why. Because if you tighten that and just go as tight as you can, you know, within reason, you don't want to break anything. Um, if you caught the wire, you see it's secure. If I had done that inner screw and it, it came out, that would mean I didn't push it in far enough. So. You do that one, you tighten it, and then you tighten the second one. The reason why 
it was good to leave a gap here and here is because after you've tightened these two little screws and the wire is in there, you might have some slack. You might not have much, but you might have some. It's at that point that you can get rid of the slack by taking this tool and putting it through the hole in here. It goes right through. You see, this is how you turn it. And as I'm turning it, um, this is going closer to that post. And if I'm, you know, the wire's in here, so it's actually staying constant. The only thing moving then is this barrel. And as I turn it, it's pulling this toward this, and it's screwing from here toward there. So if you have slack, your slack is going to get taut. And you just want to make sure you've got enough um, spare space in here so that you have room to, um, to tighten it. So I hope that makes sense. But that's basically it. You're going to find the instructions and everything you need is right here. So I think between these instructions and hopefully the video, it'll all be very clear. So good luck with your hanging system, everybody. And I'm going to now finish my own. Here it is everybody, my hanging wall. I've got all my little clips on here and hopefully um, the instructions that I gave you are clear. If you have questions, um, you know, you're, you're welcome to reach out to me, but it took me a, a few tries to get it right. Uh, you kind of want to have these, you know, fairly taut depending on, you know, how heavy things are. But the reason that I wanted to do this is because I have all these four square paintings that I started during live workshops. I've got this whole stack here. And uh, I, I mean, if I counted them up, there's like one, one of them that's four paintings. And here's another one that was monochromatic. These are all unfinished, right? Here's another one, another four, that's 12 paintings. 16, black and white. 20, monochromatic and purple. I could go on and on. Here's another black and white because I do these um, demos in my workshops, right? And I come home and I let them dry and then I don't always get around to finishing them. So one thing I really want to do here is take all of these guys and some of them are on even different kinds of paper. 
and different sizes. So like this is just a little one that I never finished. It's a tall and skinny one. I've got a square one, not much on that one. Uh, here's a little gray one. This is a five by seven, but you know, again, it's, it's unfinished. And then this one's multimedia artboard. And then not to mention all my ampersand panels. So I have so much unfinished work. And what I wanna do in the library is um, kind of challenge myself to kind of give myself a time limit in some ways and uh, maybe a month, right? And see if I can finish however many there are. There must be like, um, well, around 30 paintings, I guess. And these are all what I would consider to be like in the play stage. So the advantage of a hanging system like this, getting back to the hanging system, because that's kind of what I'm talking about here, is that, you know, sometimes they just need to dry. Um, you can hang them either way like this, you can hang it like this, and you don't need many clips. I've got way too many clips on here, but if you just like do that, then, you know, for one thing, they can be um, on view while they're drying. They can be kind of hung together in groupings. And I just want to, you know, I think part of my problem is that when I come back from a workshop, whoops, they're usually like in my suitcase and then I have to um, unpack my suitcase and sometimes that just doesn't happen right away. So these things are inside and they're drying and um, I just, if, I, if they're out of sight, they're kind of out of mind. And so for me, if, I, if they're visible, then I can kind of see what's going on. So this is what I'm gonna be doing is filling up this entire rack and I'll have all this, these videos in the library so you can kind of see how I move on from play to explore, to clarify, and sometimes go backwards because you never know what's gonna happen. But I hope to get you know experimental. And if a painting is started like in black and white, it doesn't mean it's gonna stay that way. You can change things. You can go over a black and white with color. So I'll be talking about a lot of uh, color and design concepts as I go through. Um, this whole stack of paintings and I might bring in the occasional ampersand panel that's 12 by 12 that you would not hang on here but the idea I just wanted to give you an idea of um, why this hanging uh, system is it's versatile it's inexpensive yes it does take space up in your studio but it's just really nice to have a way to um, display things as they're drying and I don't know, I'm just kind of excited because I've I always wanted to do this. I've had this IKEA system for, I don't know how long, two years or something, and I've just never um, put it together. So anyways, I hope that that's helpful and that you might want to have your own hanging system. Maybe you already do, and if you do, I'd love to hear about it. So uh, thanks everyone, enjoy, bye now.